What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Michael Ray. Hey, Bauer, coming to you with another TV show review. First off, please do me a favor. Hit that thumbs up, that like, that subscribe button. Consider becoming a member of this channel if you feel like supporting and for exclusive and early content. We do have merchandise available, like this Zeke the Plumber t-shirt from one of your favorite kid shows. And there's a limited number available. That's right. I kid you not, there's a very limited number available, and it may be off the website very, very soon. So pick up your Zeke the Plumber campfire t-shirts with the cash and everything, and some other merchandise that will be going the way for the summer until next year. I'm going to figure out how to do drops and stuff like that for merchandise. That being said, there are donation portals below. And I do have Cameo available if you feel like getting a shout-out for a birthday, me telling you some stories privately or whatever. Now that I look like a young school kid or a penis or a fingernail, whatever you guys think about after cutting my hair earlier today. But um, here we go. Let's talk about a TV show that I watched over the weekend. Let's talk about season three of FX's The Bear. I've seen the previous two seasons, and I really enjoyed it. It's the story of a young man with anxiety, depression, family issues. Uh, maybe he's a little, not bipolar, but like he has a ton of mental issues, and he becomes a chef. And he had to take over the family restaurant after the death of his brother, Michael. It's not me. Uh, and he goes on a journey taking over a sandwich shop called The Beef. That's, I believe it's in Chicago. And he generates a cast of characters. And he wants to turn it into a fine dining establishment in seasons one and two. Because he went off to culinary school. He trained with the master chefs and a lot of these big people. And he was blessed to get a routine and some sort of stability in his life. And now he wants to bring that to the restaurant. And he wants to be a success. He doesn't want to be a failure. And the restaurant industry is, a, for a lot of people, I think only 15% of all restaurants are, are successful, let alone he's minimizing himself because he's going from a beef and sandwich company to a high dining menu that cost a lot of money in a sh an area where they don't have a lot of money. So there are a lot, there's a lot of barriers for this character while he builds up the restaurant and the family of the new cast and characters that he befriended along the way that become a part of the establishment that is now called The Bear. Well, that catches you up onto season two. And I really enjoyed this show. It has a lot of heart. And I watch all the TV shows like The Master Chef, The Hell's Kitchen. Um, I wish I literally had a kitchen. Because I consider myself a decent cook. <laughs> That's funny because I made the toilet tacos. But I don't have a kitchen. I didn't know where to put the, the grease. But I consider myself a decent cook. If I just had the equipment and, and the money for all the ingredients. And I would definitely, definitely love to do all of that stuff. Um, maybe some air fryer videos in the future. Get back to some, cause I don't only have a hot plate. Now I have an air fryer, have an air fryer. Um, I bought some chicken wings after my medical test this week. Maybe I'll make some chicken wings and try to perfect a chicken wing through the air fryer <laughs> to the best of my ability. But that game being said, let's get back to the bear. So this is season three. And they just opened up the restaurant. They had the opening night. There was a lot of jitters and a lot of problems with the opening night in the finale of season two. And now the ramifications of that opening night are going to come to fruition in season three. So we're here to review season three. So in the first episode of season three, I was hoping it would immediately get into the aspects of the opening night of the Bear Restaurant, and it did not. It basically went to a backstory 
of um the main character. I forgot the name for some reason. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it went to the backstory of the culinary chefs that he worked with and kind of the abuse he got, the love he got from these master chefs. Now they finally literally had some master chefs and very restaurant-oriented people in the episodes. So now you know that the show is popular because they're getting the big-name chefs to be on the show. And we saw some more cooking vignettes and how to prepare food while they're telling the backstory. And that was fun. We got a, a little bit of the cooking stuff in season one and two. And now we get it with actual master chefs mentoring the main character. And you're seeing the abuse and all of the other things taking place. So you kind of get into his psyche, into his head. And I was like, okay. But it was a detraction to start the season three with that immediate story, with not addressing what happened on the opening night. Because I was ready to find out, you know, the, the end result of the opening night that of the finale of season two. So I was like, what? But I was okay. But I was enjoying it. But it was a little bit too much in your face. Oh, let's show the abuse. Let's show the this, the this, the that. Then finally in episode two, they addressed the opening night which was fun to see. Um, and now the character has to come to grips with what happened on opening night. You know, did he fail? Did he succeed? How the team that he put together saved him, basically. And I was like, okay, so now we're going we're gonna to find out if it's a success, a success and all that other stuff. And then just to try to move this review along, I was hoping the season would be more about the restaurant coming together, like with a lot more episodes, and you know maybe him reconciling with his girlfriend, who they had a lot of harsh words and doubts and and other stuff like that. But it seemed like this season they wanted to give the backstories of all the other characters from the show, and that's a good thing. But um, it kind of went the way of the TV show called Lost, where like in, you know, season two or three, once you finally love all the characters in the story, then all of a sudden they detract and they go to the backstories because you need to know every character's backstory to understand how they had opening night and what really happened. And I beg to differ on that aspect, albeit I did enjoy watching the backstories of the characters of the restaurant from the bear and how they became to get a job at the bear and some other opportunities and stuff like that. Um, I did enjoy it, but they could have done some of those backstories, like two or three of them in an episode. They literally could have done that in an episode. And then they could have hammered out more of the restaurant and more of the building of the chemistry and the family of in the restaurant with the internal problems and all that. So they could have got rid of the backstories in a couple of episodes if they did it a little bit better and cut a few th points that di didn't need to be made. They kind of elongated it. Um, and it just, it ended up being like five or six episodes out of a eight episode season with backstories. Albeit they went back and forth on a few episodes. I, I wanted more of the restaurant. I wanted them, you know, more of that type of stuff. Uh, but I, I didn't get it. But I enjoyed the backstories of some of the characters. Um, especially the lady who lost her job. I forgot her character's name and how she got the job at the bear. That was a good one. But then we now we get to basically the final two episodes. And now we find out that a critic has written an article about the restaurant, that he already appeared at the restaurant. Um, and then we had the money man during the season complaining why they're changing the menu every day. It's costing them money. They can't find the produce on a daily basis that they should go to vendors and suppliers. And they didn't even give the backstory of the money man. And I was like, come on, if you're going to give the backstories of everybody else, give, how did he come up with all this money? 
I'm sure they addressed it in the other seizures, like at the Thanksgiving dinner or whatever. But again, if you're going to give everybody a backstory, you know, just do it. But I guess they only did it with the characters officially in the restaurant, not the upper management. And then this season, one of the characters is pregnant, having a baby. That was a nice storyline, but it didn't really add much to anything except in the final episode where she reconnected with her mother or the final ep the episode where she had the child, where she kind of reconnected with her mother. But uh, I just, I was missing something from this entire season. So they had the finale and what happened is a former restaurant that we saw in episode one where the main character worked at is closing down after like 11 years. They're no longer profitable and they all the restaurants have to shut down, even the master chef restaurants. And now the main character has to come to grips with some of the chefs that abused him. And then they had a send off um, and they're waiting for the article to be written about, you know, if the restaurant is good or bad. And then the money man that was running the restaurant said, if we get a bad review, I'm going to have to shut down the restaurant. So more protagonist to the storyline. So we're waiting on the review of the entire season. And then in the finale, we see him then end one restaurant from one of his mentors. Then he reacts to the review and he goes, oh, crap. And we don't even get to see the review. But we're assuming it's good. They're taking pictures of the, of the food. And, and he said, oh, crap. And now we're left to wonder, you know, what happened. It's the same thing they did in season two with the opening night. Um, and now they did it in season three. And there is a guaranteed season four. But there is much to be desired from this season three. For me, that I kind of started to not care. <laughs> I'm still going to watch season four. I enjoy the show. Now I know about all the main characters. But I don't know how far they can stretch this past the season four. If they can do it anywhere. I mean, hopefully the show gets a five-year run at least. But he's had so much turmoil and trauma. Are they, they closed the beef restaurant to open up this restaurant. Are they going to close this restaurant to create a bigger restaurant? Is he going to lose the money, man? I just kind of getting bored. Kind of getting bored. It, it's excellent acting. It's excellent directing. But it was fast-paced in season one and two to where I enjoyed it enough. And then season three, in my opinion, took a step backwards, kind of left me wanting more of the restaurant stuff, the food stuff, to learn about the kitchens and the food prices and, and, and some other stuff like that. And I, I just thought they could have maximized it, but they didn't. It feels like they're tinkering us with storylines for five or six episodes to elongate it. And then there's two or three episodes in a season that are really jam-packed, like the first season, and they're stretching it out. You know, they have like an end goal and a storyline that could have been summed up probably by the end of season two or three. But now they're stretching it out to season four or five. They're, oh, let's add some episodes, you know, to maximize value. And, um, yeah, it started to bother me. Let me know your guys' thoughts on the bear. Let me know if you enjoyed it, if any of my critique is valid, or if it's not. If you're 100% you thought this season was the best, um, I consider season one the best, uh, season three the worst so far, uh, but that's just my opinion. Let me know if there's any TV shows that you think I should look at or review, um, and tell me if my reviews are getting a little bit better. I'm trying to speak eloquently and come up with better verbiage, um, but I'm not really that good at verbiage. <laughs> But I'm just a simple man telling you guys my natural thoughts on the season um, and TV shows and movies. Let me know if anything that you guys think I should watch down below. I truly want to know your opinions on this show, and I'll see you on the next review. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. Stay watching content. Stay watching TV and movies. Why? Because not only is pizza life, TV shows and movie is life.